When we live a million years in that wonderful place, basking in the love of Jesus, beholding his face, it will seem but just a moment of praising his grace. That will be a glad reunion day. tonight, if you will, page 538. Blessed be the name of the Lord. All praise to him who reigns above. We're going to sing first, second, or sorry, first, third, and fourth verses together tonight. All praise to him who reigns above in majesty supreme. tonight. You can be seated. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer here in just a minute. Now again, I want to welcome you to the house of God. Thank you so much for being back tonight. Most of you, if not all of you, were here this morning and we had a great crowd considering the weather circumstance. And I want to thank you so much for being faithful, not only this morning, uh, but uh, at night as well. It's a great testimony for a Sunday night crowd to be this large, especially in the middle of a pandemic. And I, I, I appreciate your faithfulness. You don't know what a blessing you are to your pastor uh, for me to see you, not just on Sunday school and then on Sunday morning, but also on Sunday nights and Wednesday nights. Uh, and, and I tell you what, uh, this is a strong church and uh, bears witness of that by your faithfulness uh, to come that second time on Sunday. Thank you for making this the Lord's day, Amen. And uh, and you do that by not by by coming back on Sunday night. And I realize everyone's not able to do that. And I understand completely, uh, but I tell you, it, it makes it makes uh, it, it is such a help to me and blessing to me. And uh, hoping that trust you had a good afternoon and enjoyed the sunshine, Amen. Thank the Lord for that. Turned out to be a beautiful day, didn't it? And uh, thank the Lord for that. And again, looking forward to a wonderful, wonderful service tonight and excited about giving you what God has placed in my heart about Moses tonight as we continue that series. We want to go to the Lord in prayer tonight to begin our service and ask God to bless in a special way. Uh, but do uh, remember these prayer requests real quickly tonight. Do pray for the Day family and, of course, the funeral for Tom Day. This is Brittany, one of our uh, young people with her mother passing away, her grandmother passing away. And her grandfather passed away the other day. That funeral was on Friday. Uh, so do remember to pray for that family during this time. And um, then also the Ellison family, continue to pray for them. I think they're fine. Uh, I was touched base with, Jake, Jake actually touched base with me yesterday 
uh, evening. And, uh, and I, I think they're fine. They're clear from the, the coronavirus, and we thank God for that. But uh, one of their, one of their ch- uh, children, one of their teenagers, is, is having some, uh, some uh, maybe some fatigue from that. And uh, so do pray for them, if you will. And I know they would appreciate that very much. And then also, uh, Carolyn Allen's father. Continue to remember him, if you will. Uh, are they here tonight? I don't, I don't think I see Miss Carolyn. I uh, do remember to pray for her father. Is he still in the hospital, do you know, or came home Friday? They moved him to somewhere else. And so remember to pray for our, her dad. I know they would appreciate that very much. And then uh, Pastor uh, in Yatkinville, Dean Chandler, passed away uh, just another, a day or two ago. So do pray for that family, that church during this time. And then also Ron Kenoki. Uh, passed away. Ron was a part of our church here for some time and in the past, and we love Ron and thank, thankful for him and got word that he passed away and wanted to, the family wanted to let the church know. Some of you know him, some of you don't, uh, but do pray for that family during this time. I know, I know you will. And then to pray for service tonight, that God would just bless. And if you're here tonight and you have a need or want the Lord to just speak to your heart, would you raise your hand tonight? And I want the Lord to speak to my heart. I need something. I want some. I want some motivation for, uh, from the Word of God for this week. And uh, I believe if we're thirsty and hungry, God knows how to fill our plate. Amen? And uh, so let's seek Him tonight as we go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you. Thank you so much for the great service this morning. Thank you for a great crowd, uh, not only this morning, but also back tonight. I am so encouraged tonight. And, Father, thank you for your people being faithful. And uh, thank you for the sweet spirit around this place, around this property. And thank you, Father, for the work ethic. Father, I'm just, I'm just taken back by all the hours that are invested into this ministry in so many different areas, so many different departments. And, Father, we're grateful for that. I thank you for a place where we can come and freely worship you and live for you with our lives and exalt your name. And I pray that you would be exalted tonight and the, through the choir, through the special music, through the preaching of your word. May you be exalted and magnified and uh, through it all. We'll thank you for it all. And, Father, I pray that you be with these prayer requests tonight. A lot of our church family, uh, Father, those who are having quarantine uh, because of being in, 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 be in contact with others who possibly had it and Father, I know that's frustrating for some of our folks, and I pray that you'd encourage them. Bless all those who are watching online tonight. I pray that you give them a great service. Uh, Speak to their hearts tonight as well through live stream. Thank you for that ability. Thank you for Mike over there, uh, Father, who does that for us. And thank you, Father, for all your many blessings. Bless again tonight in a special way, and we'll thank you for what you do. Minister in our hearts tonight, and most importantly, if someone's not saved, may tonight be the night of salvation for them. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Choir's going to sing for us at this time. I know they will be a blessing to you as you listen.
with us tonight, if you will. Thank you, choir. As the deer panteth for the waters, so my soul longeth after thee. Let's sing first and third verses together tonight. singing tonight. Page 21, there's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And there is, praise the Lord for that. First and second verses together tonight.
tonight. Let's sing the last verse together tonight. There are blessings you cannot receive. Thank you so much for singing out. I love that song, and there is a sweet spirit in this place, and you can't find that everywhere, and I'm grateful for that. We have a place to come and assemble and uh, where we can get a glimpse into that. Amen? Amen. And I'm grateful for that tonight. And uh, we have a couple of announcements really quickly for you. I, I forgot to mention this. I do pray for Miss Jeanette Moore. Uh, Matt Haynes and Miss Jeanette were down in Duke. Uh, this week earlier, getting us some second opinion on the scar tissue in her lungs. Miss Jeanette has been such a faithful member for our, our church for years and years, faithful choir member, soloist, and uh, is so instrumental in so many areas. And uh, and uh, so they're trying to trying to uh, she's having to, having to use a lot of oxygen in that right now, and they're just trying to get a second opinion on that. And uh, so do pray for Miss Jeanette if you will continually during this time and remember her and and brother brother Moore and I know. Uh, they would appreciate that very much. Real quickly, uh, if you didn't get your tithe and offering in uh, this morning, be sure to get that in tonight. The, uh, the ushers will be out with the offering plate receiving that after the service as you exit tonight. And, of course, online you can give. Uh, TempleBaptistChurch.info. Keep that in mind. You can also give building fund, general fund, youth fund, all of those. So keep all that in mind, if you will. Then also the financial report for November and December is available out here in the entryway. If you like a copy of that, you can get that. And uh, so keep that in mind, if you will. And then also our Wednesday evening service. Don't forget about that Wednesday night service, 7 o'clock. And Lord willing, I'll be back preaching uh, Wednesday night. I enjoyed Brother Randy Wall preaching for us last Wednesday night. We had just a grand time. I love him so much. And he is such a blessing to be around. And love his spirit. He's got a great spirit, doesn't he? And enjoyed that Wednesday night. And, uh, and I just felt like the Lord laid that upon my heart for him to come in. And, and uh, I had such a busy, busy week last week. And I just was exhausted. And I, I sometimes I feel like you need something fresh. And, and I didn't feel fresh that day. And so I gave Brother Randy a call that morning. And, and thankfully, the Lord had him available. And so uh, he was available. And what a blessing he was. And you continue to pray for him and Miss Pam and their ministry. But Wednesday night, looking forward to being back preaching to, uh, Wednesday night in our study of Revelation. So keep that in mind. And let's be faithful. Kids for Truth program, team program as well. Uh, and then also, uh, I'm glad, Harley, where are you, Harley? You back there with the girls back there. Harley found our first Archie. And so we mentioned that this morning. And uh, so, uh, Harley, where was he? Near the piano stand. And so we're grateful for that. Let's give her a hand. That's the first one she found. And we're excited about that. That's going to be a Sunday night routine we're going to do for ages 5 to 10 for a good while. And so we're excited for that. What would you get? I don't know what you got in that prize box. I'm a little curious. Candy. Oh, that's enough for me right there. I, that's all I needed to know. So uh, thank you so much. What else did you get? Can wow. That'll keep you busy during church. All right. That's awesome. Miss Hannah, will you make me a, one of those bags as well so I can take home with me? And that candy won't last long. Probably the squishy won't either. But anyway, um, uh, with our gang. Uh, but anyway, I'm, I'm grateful excited for that. And then uh, also, 
Uh, if you have any bulletin info, my wife is going to be currently doing the church bulletin. So if you have any information that you want to give to put in the bulletin, it needs to come to the church. So you can email the church, uh, templebaptistlewisville at gmail.com. Uh, and that will actually be redirected to my email, and I'll forward that over to my wife. Or you can call the church. All that information there is in the bulletin. I appreciate her doing that for the time being. And then also, our Ladies Missionary Prayer Fellowship minister of our church will be having a bake sale that will be, Lord willing, next Sunday, February 14th, here in the church office, so keep that in mind. Always a fun time. And then also, uh, the, the Ladies Missionary Prayer Fellowship will be hosting a Heart Sisters program. This is a new program to the church through that ministry. Uh, there's information there in the entryway. There's been information in the bulletin there for a couple weeks, so uh, keep that in mind, if you will. Then there's also a, a Ladies Missionary Prayer Fellowship meeting tonight. Uh, behind the organ here after the service. So you ladies that are involved in that, don't forget about that immediately after the service. And then also out in the entryway, there's a list uh, for anniversaries. And so um, we have most of your birthdays, uh, but we want to get your wedding anniversary. And so if you have a wedding anniversary, uh, we would like to recognize that in the bulletin on a weekly basis. It'll be put in the bulletin, everybody's birthday, anniversary. And we're not doing that right now. We've got it out of the habit. COVID has switched around so many things for us and the way we do things. We've done things in the past. And, and so we're going to be putting that in bulletin so everybody gets to know whose birthday it is and so forth. And we're going to put your age in there and all of that. And uh, just kidding, we're not going to do that. You say, Pastor, I don't want anybody to know when it's my birthday. Well, you know, you might get a $50 gift card, you know. So it's worth it, okay? And so I don't know about, I'm just saying you might. I didn't say you were. I said you might. All right, ha, 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 okay. So I'm just encouraging you, probably won't, but anyway, let's hope for the best, okay? And uh, so, but anyway, uh, let's, uh, let's sign up for the anniversary. You've got your birthday, but sign up for your anniversary uh, there in the entryway, and we appreciate that. You don't have to put the year, just the month and the date, all right? Brother Holly, you got an announcement real quick for us about the young people, so come make that for us at this time. All right, teenagers, this Wednesday night, we're having a Valentine party. This is part of our team meeting on Wednesday night, and uh, we're just asking you to bring wrapped candy. Don't bring chocolates that are already melted to give out to other teenagers, please. Uh, wrappers will be great. And uh, this is going to be a fun time. You don't have to have a date. Um, it's not that kind of Valentine party. And uh, we just want you to show up, and that will be a lot of fun, Valentine-themed games and so forth. And then our, our combined youth activity um, so Friday, we call to finalize reservations for our snow tubing trip at Jonas Ridge. And we've got about 30, we're really over 30 that are committed to go on the snow tubing trip, which is fantastic. And unfortunately, we're, we heard the words that no youth pastor ever wants to hear. And they said, we're all booked up. And so we called, we called three other places and everybody said the same thing. So unfortunately, we had to postpone this a week. And I know this creates a hardship for some of you, and I am so sorry about that, but uh, just couldn't be helped. But we have postponed until the 27th, and I hope you'll be able to make it. If, if for whatever reason you can't, if you will mark your name off the sign-up sheet, that way we have a good, a good count. And uh, so we'll give you more information about that. We're going to have a meeting on Sunday night, February 21st, and I'll go over the final details for that trip. And uh, the cost will be $15 per person. And uh, the youth account is going to absorb a lot of that. We thank the pastor for allowing us to do that. Those tickets are actually $30. And so we're only charging you half price, and we're trying to take the burden off of families that have more than one, one teenager or, or one junior. And so uh, just keep that in mind. Again, cost is $15. Sign up if you haven't already signed up, and we'll have that meeting on the 21st. Day by day, and with each passing moment, strength I find to meet my trials here, trusting in my Father's wise bestowment. I've no cause for worry or for fear. He whose heart is kind beyond all measure, gives unto 
each day what he deems best. Lovingly is part of pain and pleasure, mingling toil with peace and rest. Every day the Lord himself is near me with a special mercy for each hour. All my cares he fain would share and cheer me. He whose name is Counselor and Power, the protection of his child and treasure is a charge that on himself he laid. As thy days, thy strength shall be in measure. This the pledge to me he made. Help me then in every tribulation so to trust thy promises, O Lord that I lose not faith's sweet consolation offered me within thy holy word. Help me, Lord, when toil and trouble meeting, ere to take as from a father's hand, one by one, the days, the moments fleeting, till I reach the promised land. Amen. If you enjoyed that, say amen. Thank you so much, ladies. Miss Ann, very good job. Thank you so much, Miss Patricia, as well. And uh, thank you so much. I tell you what, Miss Ann Jackson thrills my soul. And if she can be faithful to church and involved in ministry, may the Lord help me, amen, uh, to be doing the same. And I appreciate her. Miss Ann's legally blind and uh, cannot drive. But we, and I appreciate our folks that give her a right to church. And Miss Ann is so faithful to the choir and other areas. And we appreciate her so very much. It's a good day when God brought her to our church. And we're grateful for that this evening. Exodus chapter number 35. Exodus chapter number 35 in your Bibles. Turn there with me, please, if you will. And if you have your Bibles, would you hold them up tonight? Just stop right there where you are and just put your finger in there and hold them up. Wave them around a little bit. And uh, I love the Word of God. Amen. And that is what is to God and give light to our lives. And the Word of God is a lamp unto our feet. It shows us where we are. It shows us our surroundings and other things, and it's a light unto our path. It shows us where to go, and I'm grateful for that tonight. And uh, if you want to help, if you want help in your marriage, uh, get the Word of God in your life. And if you want help in childbearing, get the Word of God in your life. If you want help in any relationship, get the Word of God in your life. I heard someone say that it is best when we have Scripture for every decision that we make, and I believe that's a good rule of thumb. And uh, have Scripture. God laying upon your heart uh, scripture for every decision that we make. And uh, that way we can rest in the fact that uh, this is what God would have me to do. This is what, who God had me to marry and so forth. And uh, so many different things in life. But have scripture there. Exodus chapter number 35 and verse number 4. Look in verse number 4 of Exodus chapter 35. When you find your place, say amen. amen. Verse number 4. Of Exodus chapter 35, the Bible says, And Moses spake unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord, whosoever is of a willing heart. Now remember that phrase, willing heart. Let him bring it, an offering of the Lord, gold and silver and brass. Now flip over to Exodus chapter 36 and verse number 1. We're skipping this for simply sake of time. You can read it when you get home. Chapter 36, verse number 1. Then wrought Bezaliel and Aheliab, and every wise-hearted man, in whom the Lord put wisdom and understanding, 
to know how to work all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary according to all that the Lord had commanded. In verse 2, And Moses called Bezaliel and Oholiab and every wise-hearted man in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom, even every one whose heart stirred him up to come and to the work to do it. And they received of Moses all the offering which the children of, of Israel had brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary to make it with all. And they brought yet unto him free offerings every morning. And all the wise men that wrought all the work of the sanctuary came every man from his work which they made. Verse 5, And they spake unto Moses, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which the Lord commanded to make. And Moses gave commandment that they cause it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, Let neither man nor woman make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing for the stuff they had was sufficient for all the work to make it and too much. Let's pray. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you so much for this great crowd. Thank you for the faithfulness of our people. It humbles me so much. Uh, Father, they're, they're dedicating their time to you. They're dedicating their time to, uh, to hear the, the word of God and taught and fellowship one with another. And, uh, and Father, I, I, I love these people. I'm very grateful for them. Uh, Father, thank you for allowing me to be their pastor. And I pray, Father, that you'd use me for just a few moments uh, as a vessel, as a tool, as an instrument in your hands uh, to, that you would use to bring honor and glory to your name, to be a blessing to your people, speak to our hearts, help us to be receptive tonight of everything that you speak to our hearts about. And, uh, Father, if there's someone not saved, may today be the day of salvation. May they trust Christ as their Savior this, this evening. And, Father, bless those at home that are watching tonight. And give us a great service, good, good rest of the meeting tonight. And help me, give me clarity of thought, and use me, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we're in this series, of course, in the life of Moses. And tonight, I want us to see Moses' construction of the tabernacle. Now part of the instruction <clears throat> excuse me, that Moses received from the Lord on Mount Sinai pertained to the tabernacle. And the tabernacle was, was uh, basically the, the church. We can use that as an application, but we have to be a little careful with that because it's not the same. The church is in the New Testament. The church is the body of Christ, okay? The tabernacle uh, was, again, information that God gave to Moses uh, when he was giving him all the laws as a way that that God would forgive his people their sins as a way of connection with God, okay? And the tabernacle was like a tent that the children of Israel, you understand, they're, they're traveling. They're, they're encamping in, in the wilderness. And they're, remember, they are uh, traveling by the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. And so when God moves them, they move. And when God says, I want you to stay here for a while, stay here for a while, they stay out there for a while. So they're simply following the Lord, okay? And, uh, and so uh, it, it is made to where they can take it down and put it up. Take it down and put it up. And there's specific instructions of how to carry all of these things. Who is to carry these things? And very organized. God is very organized in how he does things. And that was the tabernacle. Then we find later on when Israel gets into the promised land... And then uh, David, of course, becomes king. David, it puts God, he has this desire in his heart for a permanent place of worship uh, for this tabernacle. And of course, God did not use David to build the temple, but God used Solomon to build this magnificent work. Uh, so basically, you have the tabernacle, which is a basically a tent-type structure of a place to worship God. You have different sections of that. You have the <clears throat> table of shoe bread, you have the candlestick, you have uh, the, 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 the brazen altar where things were sacrificed, you have the, uh, 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 a place where, uh, labor, where the priest would, would wash their hands, you have uh, the, the, in the, the most important part was the Holy of Holies, where you had the Ark of the Covenant, where you had these two cherubims uh, go, uh, made out of gold, golden angels they were had their wings pointed to each other and that was the place the high priest would go into that holy of holies and sprinkle the blood of the innocent lamb uh, on the mercy seat and and god would forgive their people their sins so this was god's setup for how he would forgive his people their sins a way that israel would could come to god through the blood 
uh, a way of worshiping God, burning the incense and all of those things. And, and really, that's a whole other study on the tabernacle. Uh, but that was God's setup. God gave Moses specific instructions saying, this is how I want you to worship me. It's through the tabernacle. It's through the offering of the sacrifices of the blood of these uh, animals, it's through the burning of incense, it's through the sprinkling of blood on the Ark of the Covenant, and all of these things, all this information God has given a Moses, and then Moses relays that to the people, okay? So it's very important that we understand that. And again, the tabernacle, that was for, for as they traveled into the promised land, and then as they were in the promised land, but it was made to put up and put down the... the uh, uh, the temple, of course, was used in the same aspect, but a more prompt, more permanent place. And again, that is a place where they would worship the God. That was how they worship God. But again, now in the New Testament through Jesus Christ, as he was the ultimate sacrifice, we don't do those sacrifices anymore, right? Uh, because they were all symbols of what was to come. And then Jesus was the ultimate Lamb of God who was sacrificed once and for all. Amen. And now he's set down on the right hand of the Father. The work of sacrifice is done. It is accomplished. And we have access to God now, not through the setup of the tabernacle uh, or the temple, but through Jesus Christ. And we have the church. We are the body of Christ. We are the church. We said the other night, the church is not the walls. That is, uh, is not biblical at all. We are the church. We are the body of Christ. And we're to love one another. So many different things. And so... Uh, we, we find uh, that there's a difference there. But I want you to understand that almost immediately after receiving the instruction on how to make and operate the tabernacle, Moses gave the instruction on how to construct this to the children of Israel. Now, I just have two points tonight. <gasps> but I didn't say how many sub points we have under each one of those so uh don't uh get excited no i'm just kidding i, I really do have two points tonight number one i want us to notice the contribution uh to the work of the tabernacle and then i want you to notice the craftsman to this work of the tabernacle so without delay let's get into it number one the contribution to the tabernacle i want you to notice the request that god made to the children of israel for contributions to this tabernacle again I, I, I'm not trying to be repetitive, but I want to make sure you grasp this idea. On Mount Sinai, Moses received instructions from God on what to, how to construct this, this tabernacle, this way of worship that the children of Israel would use for years and years and years and years. And in verse number 4, we find, And Moses spake unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, God tells them this, Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord. Whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it an offering of the Lord, gold and silver and brass. So I want you to notice that the Lord has requested an offering, and really some could say commanded, an offering for the construction of the tabernacle from those who had a willing heart. I do not believe that scripturally uh, that we should have a yard sale to, to, to help the finances of the church. It is not scriptural. Uh, that is uh, God, all throughout the word of God, we find that God uses the finances of God's people to carry on the work of God. And, and we find also in the New Testament, there's so much involved in that. It's a way to worship because the Bible says, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And God says, when you give into the work of the ministry, and you say, Pastor, if you're going to preach on giving, I'm going to get out of here. No, just hold on. We're not preaching on giving tonight. But uh, when we give, the Bible says, where your, heart, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And there's tr that is, isn't that true? The word of God is so correct. Uh, and it, it is correct. It's pure. And when we give into the work of the ministry, our hearts is tied into that ministry. And so, uh, but it should be of a, a willing heart. God says, I want you uh, to, uh, to give all of these things that you have in your possession. And I, by the way, I think this is interesting. God always provides. You say, God is not going to provide. Well, he may not if you don't have faith and trust him. Oh, 
I want you to think about something about the children of Israel. Where are they at right now? Where are they at right now? They're in the wilderness. What's in the wilderness? Well, maybe a lot right now, today. But back then, there was nothing. Let me take that back. There was sand. Okay? And a Mount Sinai. So where did they get the gold and the silver and the brass and all of these different uh, types of quilting material and all of these different things to construct the beautiful tabernacle? How did they come up with that? They're in the wilderness. And let's, let's go back a little, a little further in history. Where were they before they were in the wilderness? What were they doing in Egypt? They were slaves. Now, I don't know, you know, I don't have a whole lot of sense, but I got a little bit of sense, and sense tells me that slaves are not rich. Because if they were rich, they probably wouldn't be a slave. They didn't have nothing in Egypt, friend. They were slaves. They had what Egypt wanted them to have. So how did they get all this stuff? God provided. They took it all with them. Because God gave it to them. God always provides and God always has a plan. I don't know about you, that just stirs my heart up. God always provides. You say, Pastor, I don't know what my family is going to do. If you'll trust God and you'll do if you'll put God first in your life and you'll trust Him with all your heart and you'll trust Him and you'll leave it in His hands, just sit back and rest and watch God provide. Now that don't mean we don't sit back and do nothing. That means we do all, all we, somebody said, we do all we can and trust God for all we can't. Or you do your best and trust God for the rest. But God always provides. And no matter the circumstance, when you put your trust in Him. So I want you to notice, I just thought that was neat. That's now we're in the message tonight. But the Lord requested an offering for the construction of the tabernacle from those who had a willing heart. And I want you to circle that willing heart. If you're in the habit of circling, marking your Bible, I want you to notice that word in verse number, in chapter number 35, verse number 5, right in the middle of it, a willing heart. God says, take you from among you an offering of the Lord, whosoever is of a willing heart. Heart, a willing heart. You know, God requests or commands many of things of us today in His Word, but He desires for us to do those things from a willing heart. I'll give you an example. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 7, the Bible says, Every man, according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give. Now, this is talking about finances. So let him give, not grudgedly, nor, or of necessity... For God loveth a cheerful giver. God says, I want your tithes and offerings. I want you to give to that love offering. I want you to give to support missionaries. I want you to give to the building fund, the youth fund, and your tithe and offering. I want you to give financially from a willing heart. I like the idea of having the offering play in some cases. Now, we, we may one day get back to putting it and passing out in the pews. Because it helps as a reminder, amen? But I like that because, I don't know, it's, it's more of a, I, I want to give. And, and, and purpose in, in our heart to make sure that we get that in before we leave or whatever. And I know we have online and all of that other things, and I understand that. I remember one church when they had the offering, everyone would start clapping. I, I'm telling you the truth. Like, like, I remember sitting in the service and he said, all right, it's time to take the offering. Everybody. I mean, everybody in the whole church, loud. What was that? What was going? And I thought, good night. I never in my life. I mean, it, sound, it looked like somebody just got saved or something. I mean, they were excited. And I thought, most of the time you, take, you say, let's take an offering. Everybody's like, oh, my. What, and that pastor, and it makes sense to me now, that pastor, you know what he was doing? He was trying to teach his people the word of God. He was saying, so let him give, not grudge or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Let's be cheerful givers. Let's give of a willing heart. You know, church and ministry, we ought not to have this philosophy, I have to come to church. We ought to have this mindset, I get to come to church. Listen, friend, this thing is not a job to me. I love it. I, 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 I love this. I love this place. I'm here every day of the week. I love it. I love it. And my wife asked me the other day, she said, when was the last time that you took a day off? And for the life of me, I could not figure it out. I love this place. There have been days 
we, we, you say, well, Pastor, you shot skeet. Yeah, I came after that and worked for hours in the office. I love it. I love it. And, and obviously there are times when, you, that when you're pressed to work and there are things that need to be done and, and things and, and messages that have to be studied for. Sunday's always come and, it, and most sermons take at least two, three, four hours, maybe more to study for. And, but I enjoy it so much and I enjoy the ministry and I thank God that I get to serve Him, that I don't have to do that. Amen? Amen. Let me encourage you to have a willing heart in every area of Christianity. That is the way to please God, friend. Parents, can I encourage you, let your children see you getting, getting to serving God, not having to serving God. Let those Sunday school class, Sunday school teachers and children church workers and Wednesday night workers, don't let those children see that, uh, that area of service for you being a grudge and the fact that you have to do that or you feel like you have to take that responsibility. Listen, friend, I don't want anybody, and I want to say this in the right spirit, I, don't, I want you to take it carefully, but I don't want anybody serving in any capacity of this ministry because they have to do it. I want you to get, get because you want to do it and you're excited about doing it because that's the God, what God desires for us. They have a willing heart. As far as I know, everybody enjoys what they do, as far as I know. Willing to serve. Let's be willing to give. Let's be willing to understand. Let's be willing to love. Let's be willing to forgive. Let's be willing to be gracious. Every area of your life, be, have a willing heart. What is the opposite of that? The opposite of that is what Pharaoh had. That was a cold, hard heart. No, children of Israel, you will not go. That is a cold heart. But you know, I find that even God's people can have a cold and callous heart sometimes. If we allow it to, don't allow your heart to become callous. And can I tell you, it is easy. I have to battle with that. I battle with that. <gasps> you don't. I'm being honest. Every child of God battles with that. Because if you're doing anything for God, and can I just say, time out, the fact that you're at Temple Baptist Church that believes the word of God, and the fact that you're in a soul winning church, the fact that you're, trying, you're in a church that's supporting missionaries, that's winning souls, the fact that you're involved in a church that's trying to exalt the Lord Jesus Christ, the devil's got a crosshair on your back, I promise you. I promise you. And let's, let's be careful not to have a cold and calloused and hard heart. It can happen. And let's have a willing heart to allow God to minister to our hearts, to allow God to work in our hearts, because that is when productive. And I'll tell you what, I, I don't have words to express my gratitude for you, because I know you have that. I know I'm preaching to the choir tonight. And man, we were here yesterday, people coming out of the woodwork to come. They're taking their Saturday morning, and most of the people that are here, that's some of them, they, they, have, they work all week long, that's their day off, but they're giving hours of their Saturday to come. And I know everybody couldn't. I know some people work, and I don't understand that. But I tell you what, thrilled my heart to see so many people, men and women, kids up here working with their hands and, and, and fighting and, I mean, working together. And uh, it was about a fight. We, we were knocking down some two-by-fours and so forth, and they were about hitting people. And, and uh, it's just by the grace of God that we're alive today, amen. But we had a good time. I'm just joking about the fight. And we had a grand time. And it humbles my heart to, feel, to see that willingness. It humbles my heart to see when we brought in these chairs months ago. We brought in these chairs. I remember, and it was night. It was a, it was a night. And Tyler and I went and got them from, where was it, Tyler? We go down. Hickory. And we walked down there with a big U-Haul truck and brought all these chairs in. And Tyler, I'm tell, Tyler not, took out all of these metal chairs by himself. And, uh, and, uh, and then people just started coming up. I don't know how many people. I don't count these things because I'm trying to work too. And we had plastic. They came in stacks of eight and they were plastic all over them. And boy, they were a time, weren't they? And, uh, and we had people getting them off the truck and people bringing them here. You, a lot of you remember that. And I thought, man, what a willing heart to be excited about what God is doing. And I thank you so much for that church. Let's keep having that willing, warm heart for doing the things of God. And notice the report of the contributions in verse number 5 of chapter 36. Notice that. Chapter number 36 in verse number 5. And they spake unto Moses saying, what did they say? 36 verse 5. The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work. And, uh, and, and, and also, if you read on, they, they said, wait a minute, 
there is so much gold and silver and brass and clothing. And if you'll read the rest of chapter 35, you'll find that there's a lot of things that are required for the building of the tabernacle, the construction of the tabernacle. You can read it when you get home. But there's so many different things that they need to construct it. And all of these people band together with a willing heart and they gave so much that the craftsmen said, wait a minute, they're bringing so much, we don't know what to do with it all. You're talking about a willing heart. Now this is coming right after their sin of the golden calf and all that, if you remember that. But I can't help but to think Moses was a little bit pleased with these folks because of their willingness to do something for the Lord. Now, number two, number two, not only I want you to notice the contributions uh, to the tabernacle, but I want you to notice, number two, the craftsmen of the tabernacle. Now, the craftsmen, I want you to notice a couple things about them. The craftsmen were people whom God supplied for the work of the tabernacle. Look in verse number one of chapter 36. So chapter 36, look in verse number one. Then wrought Bezaliel and Aholiab, and anybody that makes fun of me for saying those words can come up here and pronounce them themselves. Then wrought Bezaliel and Aholiab, and every wise-hearted man in whom the Lord put wisdom and understanding to know how to work all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary according to all that the Lord had commanded. So what God is doing is he's supplying men with the know-how to construct this thing together. To, to mold the golden, uh, uh, the, the brazen altar, to, to mold these, these different uh, tools and different uh, items in the tabernacle that were needed to serve and worship the Lord. You see, Moses didn't do all that. He, God supplied these men with wisdom and understanding to be able to construct these things, and God supplied that. I was talking to my wife not too long ago. I stand amazed. It never ceases to amaze me of, of the people that God raised up, the men and women that God has raised up in this church for the last several years since I've been here, and I know for years prior to that, whom God just raises up and puts in their heart to do a project. It seems like there's constantly something that has to be done and something that needs to be updated, something that needs to be restored, something that needs to be revived, and it seems like somebody, it never fails, God always puts it in somebody's heart to do something, to help. In many cases, it's more than one, and I'm so grateful for that. God supplies. God provides. And I want you to notice a couple things about these men. God had supplied these men with wisdom. Notice again in verse number 1. And notice this and underscore this. In verse number 1 of chapter 36. Then wrought Bezaliel and Oheliab and every wise-hearted man. And notice this phrase. In whom the Lord put wisdom. That's interesting. So it wasn't just wisdom that they were born with. It was wisdom that God provided and God gave to them. Now, can I apply that to us tonight? Don't always go off your wisdom that you were born with. Now, I believe that God gives every man, when they're born, some common sense, right? Amen? Now, I agree with you that most people in society do not use that God-given common sense. All right? Amen? But the truth of the matter is, I want to stress this, that we all have lessons learned. And we would all be well off to learn from the lessons and experiences of life. Amen? And and God gives us from birth, even sinners have some common sense and wisdom. If I get burnt, don't put your hand in the fire again. Some common sense, wisdom of, of, of ordinary life. But can I say this, that as a child of God, we need more than earthly wisdom. Can I share this with you tonight, that there's two types of wisdom in the world. There is earthly wisdom and there's heavenly wisdom. Turn with me quickly to James chapter 3. James chapter 3, quickly tonight, if you have your Bible. If you don't, I'll read it to you, to you. and so I want you to listen very carefully tonight. But if you want to follow along, James chapter 3 and verse number 15. James chapter number 3, I got it in front of me, but I want to turn there with you. James chapter number 3, look in verse number 15. The Bible says this. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. Notice in verse number 16, For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. Verse number 17 shows us that there's a different wisdom. Verse 17 says, But the wisdom that is from above is first, what is it? Pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. 
So there's two types of wisdom in this world. You can have wisdom that is from the earth, and that, that is a business, I'm thinking about a businessman, that is a businessman. He knows how to connive, he knows how to cheat, he knows how to climb the top of the ladder. And God says, that kind of wisdom is devilish. That kind of wisdom is sensual, it's earthly, it doesn't come from God. God has made us, and we can learn, and God has given us our own choices to make, okay, and we learn wisdom, this kind of earthly wisdom from experience and, and, and so forth and from our own carnal nature. We know how to cheat and connive, get what we want. God said that's an earthly kind of wisdom. But the wisdom that is from above. The wisdom that God gives is pure and peaceable and gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. I don't know about you, but as we mentioned again this morning, I need God's wisdom. I'm not looking for wisdom from, the, from, from, from mankind. I need wisdom from God because I'm His child and I seek to please Him and Him alone. And I want God's wisdom. You say, Pastor, how do I get heavenly wisdom? How do I get that wisdom from, a, from above? I'm glad you ask. All you have to do is ask God for it. Because in James chapter 1, verse number 5, the Bible says, If any man lack wisdom. Now, most people don't get to first base because they don't admit that they lack it. Most people say, well, I have a lot of wisdom. I've gone through a lot in my life. And that's not the wisdom that God is talking about. God is talking about wisdom that he implants in your life. Just like God gave these men wisdom. God implants, gives us wisdom to make decisions and set things in our lives. And ask God for it. James 1.5, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not. Let me encourage you, get wisdom from above. Don't get wisdom from experience or your partner on the job. Get it from God. Ask God for wisdom in everyday life. Not only these craftsmen had wisdom, but God supplied them with wisdom, but God also supplied them with understanding. There again in verse number one it says, Whom the Lord put wisdom, and what is the next two words? And understanding. So God not only gave them wisdom, but God also gave them understanding. Now the Bible talks much about gaining understanding, especially in the book of Proverbs. Let me give you a couple verses from the book of Proverbs about understanding. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 16, How much better is it to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding? Rather to be chosen than silver. Proverbs eleven twelve. He that is void of wisdom despises his neighbor, but a man of understanding holdeth his peace. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Proverbs 8, 5. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be of an understanding heart. Proverbs 4, 7. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 13. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. And Proverbs chapter 2, verse number 11. Discretion shall preserve the understanding shall keep thee. Can we get some understanding, but get it from the Lord. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And what does the rest say? And lean not unto thine own understanding. God says, in some cases you may not understand, and I don't want you to lean and trust in your own understanding. I want you to gain some understanding from above. Ask God, read the book of Proverbs, ask God to give you understanding. Whether it be through scripture or a circumstance in your life, get understanding from God, not your own. We are so, we are so bound to trust in our own selves. Pastor, I don't understand all of these things. Well, some things I don't understand either. We don't understand the ways, the things of life. So let's go to God and say, God, I don't understand. Will you please enlighten me on this? Lord, work in my heart and mind. Give me understanding with this. And we'll be surprised at what God will do in our hearts and our minds. The trouble is we, don't, we trust in our own understanding way too much. Number, uh, number next. Not only did God supply 
the men for the work, these craftsmen. He supplied them with wisdom and he supplied them with understanding. But I want you to notice that the craftsmen whom, uh, that, who God had stirred for the work. So not only God had supplied men for the work, but God had stirred people for the work. Look in verse number 2. And I'm almost done. Chapter 36. I really am. I'm looking at the conclusion right here. Chapter 36 and verse number 2. The Bible says, And Moses called Bezaliel and Ahiliab and every wise-hearted man in whom the heart of the Lord had put wisdom. And even everyone whose heart stirred him up to come unto the work to do it. So not only did they have this willing heart, but they had this stirred up heart. May we allow God to spiritually stir our heart uh, for the work of the Lord. A stirred heart can come from remembrance. I'm going to give you this verse in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse number 13. Peter said this, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he says, Yea, I think it meet as long as I am in this tabernacle. By the way, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit of God. Amen? So we need to be careful how we use our bodies. Yea, I think it meet as long as Peter says, as long as I'm in this tabernacle, to stir you up. By putting you in remembrance. Remembrance of what? Roll back the curtain of memory now and then. Show me where you brought me from and where I could have been. Remember I'm human, so humans forget. So remind me, remind me, dear Lord. And sometimes we need to be reminded what God has done for us. I close with this. I wonder if these the children of Israel, and let's ask ourselves this. Did, did they create problems? Yeah. Were they perfect? <laughs> Not by any means. I mean, they just, a chapter or two ago, just made a golden calf to worship. Moses got angry, broke the Ten Commandments. So they weren't without fault, neither are we. But here we find something miraculous happen. Could we call it a revival? Because within their heart, they had this willingness to do something for God. To give what God had given them to the work of the ministry to build this tabernacle. And then not only did they have this willing heart, but they had this heart that was stirred up to do something for God, to build something for God. And I wonder why. Maybe it was because they remembered where God had brought them from. Maybe it dawned on them one day sitting around the supper table and said, you know what, Mother? If it wasn't for God bringing us out of Egypt, we would still be slaves. You know what, children? If it wasn't for God, if it wasn't for God redeeming us and bringing us out of the hands of us, we would still be under that, the, 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 the whip of those, those Pharaoh's men. But God saved us. But God redeemed us. He, ta- he brought us out. He's, do- He's provided for us. He's done great things for us. We've seen wonderful, mighty works of the Lord. Let's do something for Him. Let's do something for Him. Remember that silver that God blessed us with when we were leaving out? Let's give a little bit of that. Let's give 10% of that. Let's, let's contribute. Let's contribute to the work of the ministry. And can I encourage you this tonight? Let's have a willing heart. I believe with all my heart the passages and the key to this whole message really is this one, two, three, four, five letter word, heart. The Lord used, those whom God used to construct this tabernacle had a willing heart and a heart that was stirred up to do something for God. Let me ask you a question. How's your heart? I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about spiritually. How's your heart? Is it warm? Is it, do you love coming to church? Or are you just cold, you know, I'm just your pastor because of choir practice tonight. I'll be honest with you. And I'm not, God knows my heart. I'm not trying, somebody's going to say I have church. Pastor's bragging on himself again. I'm not. God knows my heart. But I'll be honest with you. I don't want to leave this place on Sunday night. Because I love this place. I love you, and I love this place, and I know you feel the same way, and I want to keep that because it's so easy. If you're not careful, Satan will come up on your shoulder, and he will put something in your mind, and before 
not long at all, you'll have a cold and calloused heart. And you say, it doesn't happen. It does. I see it more than I want to. Don't let the devil put that cold, calloused heart on you. Keep your heart warm. Keep it a willing heart. Keep stirred up by remembering Calvary and what Jesus has done for you. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Someone said, Keep, come, oh, come on, instrumentalists. Come on, Brother Holly. So I'll quit preaching. Someone said, keep your eyes on the skies. Jesus is coming soon. When Jesus comes back in the rapture, I want him to find me with a willing heart and a stirred up heart to, for the things of God. I want him to find me busy in the work of the ministry, not just sitting around. I want, I want, to see, I want him to find me going forward and putting my every ounce of faith that I've got in him, holding nothing back, trusting him without reserve. From his wisdom and everything I've got, just living for him. How about it with you? The altar's open. Let's stand together. Musicians are playing. Let's stand together with heads bowed, eyes are closed tonight. The altar's open. If God has spoke to your heart, you come tonight. Perhaps you want to meet me around the altar and say, Lord, help me to have that willing heart. Lord, help me to have that stirred up heart. Lord, help me not to forget what you've done in my life. I don't know what that need is. But if you have a need tonight, you come. Perhaps it's salvation tonight if you need to be saved. If you'll come forward, we'll talk to you one-on-one about trusting Christ as your Savior. Whatever that is, you come tonight. Brother Holly's going to sing. You come as he does. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence. Let's sing it together. All the chorus is on the screens. I surrender all. Sing it out from your heart tonight. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessing. Blessed Savior, I surrender. Let's sing the next verse together. We'll be dismissed. Think about the words. All to Jesus, I surrender. Humbly at His feet I bow. Worldly pleasures all forsaken. Take me, Jesus, take me now. I surrender all. Sing it now. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you so much for your word. Thank you for speaking to my heart from it. It is so interesting to me how that you can use so many, so much of your word, every aspect of it really, every word, every jot and tittle, to help us as Christians, even using the Old Testament that was written, not written to us, but for our learning. And Father, make application for it. Speak to our hearts. Challenge us from it. Thank you for helping me tonight. I want to keep that willing heart, that stirred up heart, it's so easy in this crazy, cold society to become just like everybody else. To have that cold heart. Father, help us with that. Father, there's so much that you're doing. There's so much that you're going to do, I believe, with all my heart. And Father, I want to be a part. I want to be so, so involved. And I know I'm, I'm talking to, preaching to a group of people tonight that feel the same. I believe that. I feel that spirit. There's the same cooperative, exciting spirit amongst this place. And I'm grateful for that. Thank you for blessing. And I pray that you continue to bless beyond measure. Father, we give you all the credit, glory, and praise, and thanksgiving for what you've done and what you're doing. And we thank you on credit for what we believe you're going to do. Please continue to bless. Help our church family this week and everything that we do. We love you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you, church. Thank you so much for being here tonight. And uh, I really mean, I don't want to dismiss. I hate it. I know if I don't, you'll start walking out. And, uh, but I love you. And ice cream is calling after the hot dog. And uh, what are you saying? Are you saying something?
Oh, Super Bowl. This is unbelievable crowd for Super Bowl night. Oh, my soul. God bless you people. You are the best. I forgot all about the Super Bowl. It was the Braves and the Orioles playing. Was that right? I forgot all about that. God bless you. You are the best. My soul. Thank you so much. I'll dismiss so you can go get the rest of it. All right? God bless you. Turn around. Fellowship one another. You're dismissed.